Hey there. If you checked out Bebop Dominant Part 1, you might remember that I teased the second video. Well, congrats. You found it. In Part 1, I explained the Bebop Dominant Scale and suggested that you practice it descending only. Well, that's because in common practice, players tend to play an arpeggio going up and the scale going down. From the bebop era through the present day, this arps up, scales down shape has remained an essential tool for improvisation. In this video, I'll show you which arps to use and how to use them with the descending bebop dominant scale. Here's the basic C7, root, third, fifth, seventh. Here's the ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth. These are called extensions. They're actually the second, fourth, and sixth of a C mixolydian scale. But when you stack them on top of the basic chord, we call them the 9th, 11th, and 13th. This extended 7th chord is where our dominant arpeggios come from. Players commonly use three arpeggios on dominant 7 chords. The arpeggio starting on the 3rd, the arpeggio starting on the 5th, and the arpeggio starting on the 7th. In general, it's a good idea to avoid the arp starting on the root of a dominant 7th chord. This arp is more typical of a pre-bebop sound, and that's not what we're going for here. The arpeggio starting on the 3rd looks like this. When you're starting a phrase, use this rhythm in articulation. A 3, 4, 1. 3, 4, 1. Here's the arp starting on the 5th. 5, 7, 9, and 11. It actually spells out G minor 7, but make sure that you also relate it to C7 and see it as the 5th, 7th, 9th, and 11th of a C7 chord. With the rhythm, it sounds like this. A3, 4, 1. A3, 4, 1. Here's the arpeggio starting on the 7th. 7, 9, 11, 13. Again, you may recognize it as a B-flat major 7 chord, but make sure you see the intervals as the 7th, 9th, 11th, and 13th of C7. All three of these arps use the extensions of the C7 chord, the 9th, 11th, and 13th. Use of extensions is one of the key features of bebop and later more modern jazz styles. In contrast, pre-bebop jazz, as well as rock and blues, all tend to emphasize the root, 3rd, 5th, and 7th of the chord. Now let's take a look at how we can combine these three ascending arpeggios with the bebop dominant scale to form the classic arps up, scales down shape. The basic form is this, a four note arpeggio going up, followed by a bebop dominant scale descending. Here's the arpeggio from the third, followed by the scale. A one, two, three, four. Using this idiomatic rhythm and articulation is really important. Make sure you accent the first and last notes of the arpeggio. Accent the upbeats, the ands of the scale. Playing those accents will really help to get your swing feel happening. Here's the arpeggio ascending from the fifth of C7, followed by the scale. A three, four, one. A uh, three, four, one. And here's the arp ascending from the seventh of C7. A uh, three, four, one. And one. Notice that in each case, the arp leads you to a chord tone to begin your scale. In the case of the arp from the third, the root. In the case of the arp from the fifth, the third. In the case of the arp from the seventh, the fifth. Make sure that your bebop dominant scale is correct, including that extra chromatic note between the root and the lowered seventh. Here's a bebop dominant exercise that'll give you a real workout on both the arpeggios and the scales. Three, four, one. Let's break it down and see what's going on. Arpeggio up from the third, scale, arp from the fifth, scale, arpeggio from the seventh, and then the scale going all the way down. 
Now I'll add a connecting line between C7 and F7. A three, four, one. Here it is. Etc. You can see that that connecting line leads to the third of F7. So ultimately, you can practice dominant seventh chords around the entire cycle of 12 chords. Think of this as a nice long-term goal to just be able to fly through the entire cycle. To work up to that, I suggest you practice two chords at a time, like this. F7. Remember, always practice with a metronome on beats two and four or use a play along. Never just work on the notes. Always be working on your time. Happy practicing.